Out of the depths I cry to you, Lord. Lord, hear my voice. I wait for the Lord. My whole being waits. Lord, hear my voice. Put your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord is unfailing love. With the Lord is full redemption. Friends, scripture tells us that even though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through God's spirit that dwells in you. Therefore, with hope and trust, let us confess our sin together. O oh Lord, if you held our sin against us, who could live? We often have more faith in death than hope in your promise of life. We seek peace through war. We seek community through division. We find our hope in human strength instead of your faithfulness. We abandon the sick, the hungry, the dying, and the poor in pursuit of our own selfish desires. Yet even so, you love us. With you there is boundless grace and unfailing love. Have mercy on us, O God, and deliver us from sins known and unknown. Redeem and renew our hearts through your Son, Jesus Christ, and sustain us through your Spirit. is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. 
For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. Friends, hear and believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. As we turn to God's word, let us pray. God of light and life, as you promise to hear the cries of your people, hear us now as we call upon you. By the power of your spirit, open our minds to receive your word. Open our hearts to hope in your word. And open our whole beings to live by your word alone. Through Christ, your living word. Amen. A reading of Psalm 130. Hear now God's word this night. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our Hebrew scripture this evening comes from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 1 to 14. Listen now for God's word. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you. I will cause flesh to come upon you. I will cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live. And you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them. But there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived. And they stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, mortal, These bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore, I prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord, I'm going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord, When I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When I'm not working at the church, I work on the oven at Pizza Lupo in Lawrenceville. And don't let anybody tell you differently, it is the best pizza shop in the city of Pittsburgh. (laughs) I fell in love with pizza making in college and quickly learned that it's a very romantic and soul-centering process. Good pizza, that is, pizza made from the heart, is a gift made by the hands that's given to the hearts of those whom you love. Good pizza is not eaten alone. It's shared with friends and neighbors, prepared by the community for the community. One day, a man from the neighborhood came in looking real tired. He was dirty, probably just having come from a job site, and he was hungry. He asked for a slice of pizza, and much to his disappointment, we didn't serve slices. In a big huff, he exclaimed, doesn't anyone serve cuts of pizza anymore? Used to be you could walk into any shop in Lawrenceville and get yourself a slice for just a couple of bucks. Feeling sympathetic for the man, I offered what I thought was a thoughtful and helpful piece of information. I said, sir, If you're looking for a slice, 
there's a little family-owned shop just up the hill in Morningside called Eddie's. They have good cuts up there. By his response, you would have thought that I told him to go die in a ditch somewhere. He was furious that I would suggest going to another neighborhood to get pizza, telling me that he was born and raised in Lawrenceville. <laughs> How dare I insult him, he said, storming out the door, still cursing me as he walked away. One of the owners said he just took it the wrong way, Davis. But it was more than that. He was deeply upset, even angry, crying out in frustration that things just weren't how they used to be. I think we as people of faith can get this way sometimes. The world is not what it used to be, and church is not what it used to be either. In churches around the country, there are fewer people sitting in pews and more people sitting in bleachers. Sunday mornings are not just for worship, but for soccer games and play rehearsals and band practice. Since a worldwide pandemic forced the doors of the church to close, many have formed new habits. They practice new liturgies in nature, art class, sitting around the table for brunch. Some churches are putting all of their focus and energy in just keeping the doors open. Some churches have never reopened. In an increasingly secular world, we can often feel like God is so far away. We may cry out in disbelief, shouting, Why, Lord? Why do you let the world go on this way? How long will you forsake us? We may even wonder if God hears our cry at all. The people of Israel certainly felt this way during the Babylonian exile. They were living far away from the Holy Land with no temple, no festivals, seemingly no sense of identity as children of God. In our passage this evening, the Lord shows Ezekiel a valley of dry bones that represent the people of Israel. The bones are very dry, meaning the people in this vision have been dead for a very long time. There's not a drop of blood or an ounce of marrow to be found. These bones are white, stripped of all color, brittle and broken. It is a scene devoid of hope. But Ezekiel still has hope in the Lord. When God asks him if these bones can live, Ezekiel is not quick to dismiss the question for the foolishness that it seems to be. He knows that nothing is impossible with God. He stands firm in his fear of the Lord, surrendering himself to the God in whom all his hope resides, as he says, O oh Lord God, you know. But you see, friends, Ezekiel is not passive in his surrender. He doesn't answer God's questions by throwing his hands up in defeat, but instead by throwing himself down in reverence and obedience to the Almighty God. He awaits humbly and patiently for the command of the Lord. Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. God commands Ezekiel to prophesy to those who are hopeless, those whose hope has withered away completely, and tell them that the word of the Lord is true. They will return to the land of Israel. They will not remain in exile, for they are God's beloved children. Though their old ways of life are dead, the Spirit of the Lord will give them new life. And this new life, this new hope found in the word of the Lord, it's not something we can gain for ourselves. God calls us to be active participants in his work and will, but that does not mean we can control it. 
We do not determine for ourselves where and how this new life begins. We can only follow where the Spirit leads. Ezekiel prophesies to these bones, and they begin to take form, bone to bone, covered with flesh. What was once a valley of desiccated bones is now a valley full of abled bodies. But there is no breath in them. The word breath here is the Hebrew word ruach. It can be translated as breath or wind or even spirit. It is the same ruach of God that hovers over the chaotic waters in Genesis that breathes life into these bones before Ezekiel. It's the same ruach that breathes life into you and me. Without this breath, we are but empty husks. Lifeless souls doomed to wander aimlessly under our own direction. The people of Israel viewed the destruction of Jerusalem and the exile in Babylon as a direct result of their own sinfulness. They believed that because of their sin, God had given them over to the violence of their enemies. In essence, they believed by following their own direction that God had abandoned them. And without God, there's no hope at all. Thinking of how the Israelites must have felt in exile, I'm reminded of the story of a character from the best show Nickelodeon ever made, Avatar The Last Airbender. (laughs) You laugh, but it's incredible. I highly recommend it to you. When he was just 13, Prince Zuko of the Fire Nation was forced to duel his own father by speaking out of turn during a war meeting. Because he refused to fight, he was banished, bearing a burn scar on the side of his face to remind him of his shame. Accompanied by his uncle Iroh, Zuko scoured the world searching for the greatest threat to his nation's victory in the war the Avatar, when he ultimately fails to capture the Avatar, Zuko and his uncle become fugitives of the Fire Nation, living like refugees in enemy territory. They went from eating freshly cooked food in a palace to begging for scraps on the street, sleeping on king-sized bed with fluffy pillows to lying restlessly on the floor of a cave. In living a fugitive's life in extreme poverty, Zuko felt like his honor would never be restored. He told his uncle that he had no hope of ever returning home, no hope at all. Before his nephew could run off into the wilderness alone, Iroh grabbed him by the shoulder and said, No, Zuko, you must never give in to despair. Allow yourself to slip down that road and you surrender to your lowest instincts. In the darkest times, hope is something you give yourself. That is the meaning of inner strength. But what Iroh doesn't tell his nephew is where exactly that hope can be found. It cannot be found in riches or worldly possessions. It cannot be found in any worldly human power. It cannot be found in political leaders. Nor can it be found in faith leaders. It certainly cannot be found inside yourself. Friends, this hope, this shining light that no darkness can overcome, can only be found in the Lord our God. The Lord, in whom we find our full redemption. The Lord, whose blessings are new every morning. The Lord, 
the God of Israel, whose very breath breathes life into our lifeless bones, the Lord, the sovereign God, whose steadfast love is so boundless, it could not help but boil over and create the whole universe. The Lord, Jesus Christ, whose grace is so unmeasurable, it could not help but throw him from the throne into exile, that he might redeem all of creation through his body and blood. Friends, this bread and cup at this table are signs that testify to the love and grace of the God in which we hope. Though we too may feel like we're living in exile, we must never give in to the thought that God has abandoned us. The feast we're about to share has been prepared by Christ for Christ's people. It is meant for all, not meant to be eaten alone. Every time we partake of it, we remember the death of Christ and hope for the promise of new life. And just as Christ lifts up his own body and blood to God for the promise of new life, may we also lift up our bones and the bones of our community for God to renew and revive. Let us put our hope in the Lord, trusting in his promises. Let us wait for the Lord as long as night be upon us, for new every morning are God's mercies. The dry bones of our past may not look the same when God is done with them, Though our world has changed so much, we may be surprised how much more we will change in the power of the Spirit. But in our new life, graves thrown open and our bones restored by the Ruach of God, we will know that the Lord hears us when we cry. And there is no greater hope than that. Amen. Now let us join our voices affirming what we believe in the words of Philippians 2. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess to the glory of God. Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen.
A table has been prepared for us, a place where we are invited to draw near to the one who draws near to us. Our Savior invites all who hunger for his grace to share in the peace and this feast which he has prepared. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of glory, you are worthy of thanks and praise, for before time began, your spirit hovered over the chaos and called forth creation. Breathing your life into us, you set humanity in a garden of delight to glorify and enjoy you forever. When that garden turned for us to a valley of dry bones, you sent prophets to speak your truth. When we found ourselves lost in exile, you entered into our hopelessness in the person of Jesus Christ. When he had conquered death and all that which would threaten to separate us from you, you put your spirit within us that we might live anew. Come among us this night in the power of that same spirit that your people may be transformed from dry bones to your living body and that these gifts of bread and wine may become for us the body and blood of your son, Jesus Christ. Resurrecting God, where your people are in the valley of the shadow of death, bring them your word of hope and of life. Where they are in the place of stench and decay, give them the balm of your healing and forgiveness. Where they are under the weight of grief and depression, roll away the stone that presses upon them. All until that day when sin and death, sorrow and suffering will be no more, and all creation is redeemed in your steadfast love, through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night of betrayal and arrest, took bread. And after giving thanks to God, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, after supper, he took the cup. saying, this is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. And the Apostle Paul assures us that every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we do proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes. Friends, these are the gifts of God for you, the people of God.
Let us pray. Faithful and steadfast God, we thank you for the feast of eternal life. Feed us always with the bread of life and draw us closer to where your spirit dwells. In beauty, truth, and goodness, keep us forever. Help us to remain hopeful in your word, trusting your promises, not to hoard for ourselves, but to share with others. And help us to pray the way Christ taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, with the Lord is unfailing love and full redemption. Confident in this, let us now go into the world, strengthened by the Spirit of the living God, by whose breath we are made alive. Amen. <laughs> 